Hey guys, save money, save time. I'm going to teach you how to make your own elderberry syrup. I've made syrup from probably a hundred gallons of elderberries I've picked myself. There's definitely a technique to making it yourself. A technique that won't drive you completely crazy. First of all, we're going to save a lot of money. You know, when you buy elderberry syrup online, you're going to pay like 20 bucks for a little bottle. And I'll tell you, one of those little bottles, we would go through, I mean, I don't know, it would last an hour <laughs> around here. We use a lot of elderberry syrup. And elderberry is a tough one to harvest and to process, yet it is worth it to me to do it. I do it every year, but I have tried to streamline the process as much as possible. We're going to have five steps. Harvesting, removing the berries from the stems, cooking them, straining them, and then preserving them. So let me talk a little bit about each of those five steps. First of all, you're going to harvest. This is the easiest. You need to find out when they're ripe. Make sure you're picking them at peak ri ripeness. Um, one problem that you're going to find in the next step is that if the berries are overly ripe, it's going to be a little more difficult to get them off the stem. So one of the things you're going to be learning about is with your own local berries is at what point are they optimally ripe. And you know, as you see birds starting to eat them, that's when I would probably go out and, and check it out. And because it's, it's the next stage, is this is possibly a drive you completely crazy stage, which is getting the berries off of the stems. And I found that the method that people use and the success that they have really depends on the variety of berry. You, you will see on our website a lot of pictures of elderberries that look bluish, and that's kind of a Southern California thing. You probably have a dark elderberry, and um, there are recommendations to use maybe a comb to pull all the little berries off the stem and you know different devices to pull the berries off. For our local berries, I use my fingers and I've tried a lot of different methods. It just works best for us. Now one problem is if they're over, overly ripe, a lot of the sort of berry fibers will stay on the stem and it's just extra messy. I still harvest them, but a lot of stuff stays on the stem and you know, that is what it is, right? I wouldn't worry too much about that, but it is good to get them when they're not completely falling off the stem. Play around with different methods, different ways of getting them off the stem. But this is a tedious process and you're going to want to put on a movie, you're going to want to just sit there and pull those little berries off into a bowl and you know your hands are going to turn purple. You will be purple. Maybe keep a, an old towel or a rag close by to get some of those juices up so it doesn't completely destroy your furniture. So just be ready for that. That will happen and there's no way to get around that. Yeah, elderberry is used as a dye. So there you go. Okay, so we've harvested, we've removed them from the stems, and so now you have a big bowl of elderberries. You're gonna simply rinse them quickly, like so. Get some of the floating solid matter. I just like scrape it up with a strainer to get it off the water. And then I pour this all into a pot. I, I, strain, I, I strain the berries, pour the berries into a pot, add a little bit of water, cook them. And it, it's very simple, so if I want a little extra seasoning in there, I might cook it with uh, some cinnamon sticks, and you'll find specific recipes on the website. So, um, but really, you can keep it simple, and you can just cook your elderberries in a little bit of water. So this is the cooking stage. This is the easiest stage by far, okay? So you're gonna cook them, and you know, 20 minutes, it, 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 it's not a big deal. They cook quickly. And then the next stage is straining. And what you're going to need is one of those like old time, like you, people, tomato um, preservers use them, you know, to, to separate the seed and the skin from the tomato when you're making a tomato sauce. And you're going to want one of these because you're going to pour your elderberries in it and you're going to do this. Okay, you're going to strain, strain, strain. Now this is another place where you might go crazy because you're going to want, you, you've worked so hard pulling those berries off the stem and cooking them that you are going to want to save every little bit of the juice because what you're capturing is the juice that comes out of there, the seed and the skin, you're going to just compost or something. And so you can literally go crazy trying to get every last bit of juice because what you're going to see is, is if you leave this strainer standing, it will keep dripping and more and more juice will come out of it. You'll say, wow, I got it. You want to keep doing this and this and this and you'll spend a lot of time straining. What I suggest to you, don't spend all your time straining. Just simply keep it simple. Overpick your berries. Pull more off the stems. Don't spend a lot of time with this. Just get the juice out 
and move on. Get your kitchen cleaned up and move on. Because you'll get some more juice if you let it sit. You could do that. You could strain it more and more and more. You'll get a little more juice. You get tablespoon, tablespoon, tablespoon. Forget it. Move on. <laughs> okay. And so now you have the juice. Now at, at this stage, you need to decide how you're going to preserve it. What you can do certainly is turn it into a syrup at this stage. So you're going to add your sugar and then you can can it. You can just do a water bath canning and have a bunch of quarts or pints of elderberry syrup in your pantry. When I can it, we'll typically do it by the quart. We blow, we can blow through a quart very quickly during flu season. And so a quart is not too big of a size. It just depends on your usage. But increasingly what I'm doing is I'm freezing it. I have a lot of freezer space and what I do is I freeze it in a um, glass canning jar, usually a pint that doesn't have a neck. So the neck is the curved part of the jar. And because if it has a neck and it freezes and you know, it expands, right? It's, it could break the neck of the jar. So you want a jar that's just, just has no neck, just straight up and down. And you pour your, um, your syrup or your juice into it and you freeze it, period. I say juice, what I do increasingly is I simply strain my juice out, put it in the jar, and freeze it. When I pull it out of the freezer later, I might sweeten it with sugar, honey, or something, stevia. Basically, this doesn't tie up my freezer space with sugar. It doesn't tie me down to having sugar in this syrup. It's just a juice. So it's more versatile and it takes less freezer space. And, and then you don't have to do the water bath canning. So that's, that's my method. And that's increasingly what I'm doing. And if you're using dried berries, you, you use the same method. You just didn't have to go through the harvesting and plucking, but you, you're still going, going to cook and you're going to strain. And then you're going to do something with that juice or the syrup. Um, probably just put it in your refrigerator. Okay, so good luck. This is, it really is fun and we this is this is a staple in our pantry and it hopefully will become a staple in yours. Get more information about elderberries and other fun foods at the Fresh Bites Daily website and you might check out my um, mailing list where I talk about inflammation and different strategies we can use to combat inflammation and, and promote our health.